Welcome to another video where I'm going to do a full mock test. You guys seem to like these type of videos, so you ask, I give. In this video, I'm going to be doing a 50 question mock test on the desktop app, which is Driving to Success, giving you hints, tips and tricks like I normally do, breaking it down. And then I'm going to be doing the hazard perception, a complete hazard perception video to see if I can better my score from the previous videos, which I will leave the link up here somewhere. So let's waste no time and let's get started. What does the white line along the side of the road indicate? When they're talking about the white line along the side of the road, they're talking about this line here. And that marks the edge of the carriageway. So we're looking for something along those lines. No overtaking, approach to a hazard, that's the middle line. No parking and the edge of the carriageway. You're driving towards this level crossing. What would be the first warning of approaching train? I always say look at the images or the image in this case and the question is what would be the first warning of approaching train so it's going to be the lights um it goes amber light first to let you know a train is coming and then it goes to flashing reds so it's going to be flashing amber lights is what we're looking for something along those lines so you're driving towards this level crossing just to repeat the question what would be the first warning of approaching train one half barrier down, no, both half barriers down, extended amber light, yes, they've got to warn you first, twin flashing red lights comes after. What should you do if a vehicle starts reversing off the driveway? So if you're coming towards the car and it's reversing off the driveway, warn of your presence, which will be beep your horn or flash the lights. In this case, it's going to be beeping the horn. Remember, beeping the horn and flashing the lights are the same meaning, warning of your presence. Speed up and drive through quickly. No. Sound your horn and be prepared to stop. Yes. Drive through as you have priority. You do have priority, but it doesn't make it safe. Move to the opposite side of the road. And again, that's totally dangerous. At an incident, someone is unconscious and you want to help. What would be the first thing to check? Normally, the first thing you're going to be checking is their airways to make sure they're still breathing. Um, whether the airway is open. Yes. Whether the vehicle is insured, no. Whether they have any allergies, no. Whether they're comfortable, and again, no. Always make sure the old airways is open so they are constantly breathing, obviously. How can you reduce the risk of your vehicle being broken into at night? The key word there is reduce the risk. Leave it in a well-lit area. That's a possibility. Don't engage the steering lock, no. Park in a poorly lit area, that's what the thief wants. And park in a quiet side road, again, that's what the thief wants. You want it in a well lit area. Um, what does it mean if the signs at a bus lane show no times of operation? If it's got no times, it's 24 seven. It means you cannot use it at any time. The lane is only in operation in daylight hours, no. The lane is op in operation 24 hours a day, yes. The lane isn't in operation. No, the lane is only in operation at peak times. What does this sign mean? Um, you should know by now, triangles are warnings. So it's warning you. It's a picture of a tram. That's why you always look at the images first and then go from there because there's sometimes there's clues in there. So what does this sign mean? Trams only. No oncoming trams. No trams no trams ahead no trams crossing the head yes and remember with images you're going from top to bottom so the trams crossing your path that's why it's trams crossing ahead how should the right hand lane of a free lane motor be used um it's overtaking the common answer in the classroom is normally a high speed lane on the motorway all the lanes are the same speed for this one it doesn't say a car but because you're taking a car theory test you've got to assume it's you so it's 70 miles now, the left hand lane 70, the middle lane 70, the right hand lane 70. So it's only for overtaking. So as an acceleration lane, no. As an overtaking lane, yes. As a higher speed lane, that's a common answer in the classroom, no. As a right turn lane, no. If that's, again, I'm just going to leave it at that, no. The answer is no. What should you do if an amber light comes on and a warning sounds while you're driving over a level crossing? Get everyone out of the vehicle immediately, no. Stop and reverse back to clear the crossing, no. Stop immediately and use your hazard warning lights, no. Keep going and clear the crossing. You're going to keep going because you're already on the tracks. Just 
breaking the question down for you. What should you do if the amber light comes on and the warning sounds while you're driving over a level crossing? You're already over it, so you might as well keep going. That's the safest option. What does this sign mean? This blue circle is mandatory, is crossed out. That's the minimum speed. So we're looking at the end of minimum speed. End of maximum speed, no, that'd be a red circle. Um, maximum speed, 30 miles an hour, no. End of minimum speed, yes. Minimum speed, 30 miles an hour, no. What's the most important reason for having a properly adjust, adjusted head restraint? The head restraint stops you from getting neck injuries, whiplash if someone goes in the back of you. It's not for comfort. It's for stopping you from getting whiplash or neck injuries if someone goes into the back of you. To help you relax, no. To help you maintain your driving position, no. To make you more comfortable, no. To help, to help you avoid neck injury, yes. You're traveling behind a moped. What should you do if you want to turn left a short distance ahead? Stay behind until the moped has passed the junction. That's the possible. Pull alongside the moped and stay level until just before the junction. No. Overtake the moped before the junction. No. Sound your horn. No. It's going to be no. It's going to be but I'll stay behind. With cyclists, mopeds, horses, you're looking to always stay behind and give them plenty of room. That's always going to be the safest option for the theory test. Why do motorcyclists use dipped headlights in daylight? Headlights are used to be seen and um, to seen and to see and to be seen. Let me get that out. Why do motorcyclists use dipped headlights in daylights? The reason for using headlights, full stop, if it's motorcyclist or a driver, is to see or, or to be seen. That's the reason why. There's no other reason. To stop the battery overcharging, no. The rider is inviting you to proceed, no. So if the rider can be seen more easily, yes. To improve the rider's vision, no. What type of glasses would make driving at night more difficult? Round, no. Half moon, no. Tinted, because it's making things look darker, yes. If tinted is not on there as an option, it's going to be sunglasses. And then you've got bifocals, again, no. What's the legal minimum tread depth for tyres on your trailer or caravan? It doesn't make a difference what tyre they're talking about, whether it's trailer, car, caravan, it's 1.6 millimetres. So it's 1.6 millimetres. No cuts, bulges, rips or tears on the tie wall is the full answer for legal requirements. But in this case, we're looking for 1.6. You don't need to look any further. It's always going to be just 1.6. When may front fog lights be used? So again, look at the image. So when may front fog lights be used? When it's foggy or visibility is less than 100 metres? Um, when they're fitted above the bumper, no. When visibility is seriously reduced, that's a possible. When an audible warning device is used, no. When they aren't as bright as the headlights, it's going to be this one based on the answers we've got. What should you remove from your car before leaving it unattended? The car's dealer's details, no. The service record, no. The vehicle registration document, otherwise known as the V. 5C document, never leave that in your car because it has your details, the register keeper's details on it. If someone gets their hands on it, they can change your name to their name and lay claim to your car and the owner's manual. No. You're at a junction controlled by traffic lights. When should you wait at a green light? When your way's blocked, basically. So if there's traffic um, on the other side, you always leave the junction clear like a yellow junction box. When pedestrians are waiting to cross, no. When you think the lights may be about to change, no. When you intend to turn right, no. When your exit from the junction is blocked, yes. You're driving on the motorway. What should you do if luggage falls from your vehicle? Stop on the motorway and switch on your hazard warning lights while you pick it up, no. Walk back up the motorway to pick it up, no. Pull up on the hard shoulder and wave traffic down, no. Stop at the next emergency to live and report the incident. That's going to be the safest option. You're following two cyclists as they approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane. Where would you expect the cyclists to go? They can go in any direction. Cyclists would choose the safest lane for them. So first one out, any direction. To the right, no. To the left, no. Straight ahead, no. 
when should you check the engine oil level early in the morning uh as a possible um before a long journey that's a better one when the engine's hot no every time you drive the car if you're checking it every time you drive the car it means you probably got a problem um you want to check it before you go on a long journey to make sure you've got enough to take you on that long journey um, but your engine oil level and all your levels, your engine coolant, your brake fluids, your tyres even, should be checked when they are cold. In order to supervise a learner driver, you need to have held your full driver's license for the same category of vehicle for at least three years. What other requirement must you meet? You have to be 21 or over. Um, to have car, to have a car with dual controls, no. To be an approved driving instructor, no. To hold an advanced driving certificate, no. To be at least 21, yep, you've got to be at least 21, have your license for at least three years. Why should you allow extra room while overtaking a motor cyclist on a windy day? The key word there is windy day. The rider may be blown in front of you. There's a connection, they're being blown in front of you on a windy day. The rider may turn off suddenly to get out of the wind, doesn't affect you unless you're turning your path. The rider may stop suddenly, um, that's not going to be an option for a free test. It's about safety. They're not going to stop suddenly. The rider may be traveling faster than normal. No. Um, again, like I said, the connection is a windy day and be blown in front. So let's sometimes look for keywords, look what I call golden nuggets in the questions um, that can help you out and ease your stress and fears as well. You just need to stay calm enough to read the little hints and tips. Why are place names painted on the road surface? To warn of oncoming traffic? No. To help you select the correct lane in good time? Yes. To restrict the flow of traffic? No. To prevent you from changing lanes? No. You're driving past a line of parked cars. What should you do if a ball bounces out into the road? Again, look at the image. Um, as instructors, we normally say that where does a ball is a child? So you're going to look out for a child running after the ball. Um, continue driving at the same speed and sound your horn. No. Stop and wave the children across. You should never wave. So once it's got a wave in the answer, you know it's going to be wrong. Slow down and be prepared to stop for children. Yes. Continue driving at the same speed and flash your headlights. No. What should you do if a doctor prescribes drugs that are likely to affect your driving? Avoid driving on motorways. No. Get someone else to drive. That's the safest option. Never drive at more than 30 miles an hour. No, only drive if someone is with you. Again, no. If you've been um, prescribed medication, that's going to affect your driving. You shouldn't drive. So obviously get someone to drive or take um, transport or cab. What does this sign mean? This sign means park and ride. So basically what it means, what it's saying to you, you drive to where the coach is then you jump onto the coach and the coach will now take you to the town center um so it reduces congestion and pollution that's what that is it says park and ride um parking area for cars and coaches no no parking for buses or coaches no direction to park and ride car park yes direction to bus and coach park no where will you see these red and white markers these are countdown markers, if you didn't know. Um, 300 yards, 200 yards, 100 yards. And they're counting you down to something particular. The co there's colours, there's blue and white, which is motorway, green and white, which is dual carriageway, black and white on approach to roundabouts. And these are red and white. The options they can give you on a real test is an approach to a level crossing without gate or barrier, or an approach to a concealed entrance or exit you cannot see. So let's take a look at the options. Approaching a concealed level crossing, it's going to be about one. Approaching a concealed speed limit sign, no. Approaching the end of a dual carriageway, that's going to be green and white. Approaching the end of a motorway, that's blue and white. How can you reduce the damage your vehicle causes to the environment? So how can you reduce the damage your vehicle causes? Walk or cycle. Anticipate well ahead. That's also an option. By anticipating well ahead, that means you're not braking heavy and you're not accelerating heavy. So let's pop mark that one down. Brake heavily. It's definitely not. Use narrow side streets. No, use busy routes. So it's going to be that one. Um, they On the rule test, they can also give you, like I said in the beginning, um, walk or cycle. But in this case, anticipate well ahead. So you're planning your braking smoothly. 
planning acceleration smoothly. Why should these road markings be kept clear? And normally because children, so children could be seen and see to cross the road safely, something along those lines normally. To allow children to be dropped off at school, that's what you see parents do, but that's wrong. To allow children to be picked up after school, again, that's wrong. To allow teachers to park, no. To allow children to see and be seen when they're crossing the road, yes. How much fuel will you use by driving at 70 miles now compared to driving at 50 miles now? And this one, you either know it or you don't, but I know now the theory tests have settled on 15%. So the answer is going to be 15%. You're invited to a pub lunch. What should you do if you know that you ha you'll have to drive in the evening? Um, eat a hot meal with your alcoholic drink. No, don't drink any alcohol. That's the best option, safest option. Avoid mixing your alcoholic drinks. No, have some milk before drinking alcohol. Again, no. Um, if you're going to go for a lunch and you know you're going to be driving, just don't drink, full stop. What does the, this line across the road at the entrance to a roundabout mean? So they're talking about these broken lines. Um, and again, the key word there is roundabout. What do the lines at the roundabout mean? What do you do at a roundabout? You give way to your right. Um, so the traffic from the right has priority. So we're looking for something along those lines. Again, that's why I said there's clues in the image. Um, traffic from the left has right of way. No, give way to traffic from the right. That's what you do at roundabouts. That's all that is. Um, you have right away, no stop at the stop line. The stop line is solid white line, not broken. Which vehicle is most likely to take an unusual course at a roundabout? So the key there is most likely um, to take an unusual route. It's going to be a large vehicle because they've got to swing out to get around the corner. Otherwise, they're going to be mounting the pavement or curb. Um, delivery van, no. Milk float, no estate car. These guys will all be doing that meter from the curve for those of you taking driving lessons. A long vehicle, as I said, will swing out to get around a particular corner. This, what does this sign mean? This is a contra flow. So this sign is a contra flow. If, just in case you didn't know, contra flow means going against the flow of traffic for the ferry side of it. So you're going up here and the traffic's going on the other side. This is a dual carriageway. Let me just rub that out a bit. So this bit is a dual carriageway, central reservation. But it's been opened up because of roadworks. So you're now going up. The traffic will be coming down the other side. But there'll be barriers blocking you off. Leave at the next exit. No. One way street. No. Change to the left hand lane. No. Contra flow system. Because you're going against the flow of traffic. Powered vehicles used by disabled people are small and can be hard to see. What must they display if they're travelling on the dual carriageway? Slow moving vehicles will have to display an amber light to let you know slow moving. That's your tractors, your recycling bin, dust carts, um, that type of thing. So slow moving, flashing amber, flashing blue beacon is emergency services, flashing green beacon is your doctor's cars, flashing amber beacon is slow moving. Don't need to go any further on that one. Why do motorcyclists wear bright clothing? The reason why they wear bright clothing, so they could be seen. Um, they must do by... They must do so by law. No. It helps keep them cool in the summer. No. To make them more visible. Yes. The colours are popular. No. When should you use the left hand lane of a motorway? The left hand lane of a motorway is only for overtaking. Nothing more, nothing less. It's for overtaking. When you're making a phone call. No. When the road ahead is clear. No. When your vehicle breaks down. No. That should be the hard shoulder. And when you're overtaking slower traffic in the other lanes, yes. What should you do before starting a journey in foggy weather? Now they can give you two things on this one, two options on this one, on the real test I'm talking about. Um, either leave more time for your journey because fog is a mist, it's hard to see, so everyone should be driving slower, which means it's going to take you longer, or clean your windscreen and clean your headlights. So let's see what options. Have a ca caffeinated drink, no. Allow more time, yes. Wear a high visibility jacket, no. Reduce your tire pressure, definitely not. How will a police officer in a patrol vehicle signal for you to stop? As a police officer, they will stay behind you, flash the lights and point to the left. So they literally stay behind, flash the lights and point to the left to let you know it's you they're after. 
Um, pull alongside you, use the siren and wave you to stop. That's pull alongside. See, good thing I double check that. Pull alongside you. They're not going to pull alongside. They're going to stay behind. That's the reason why I definitely say read the answers and questions properly. I must have made a mistake there. Overtake and give the slowing down arm signal. No. Flash for headlights, indicate left and point to the left is the correct one. And use the siren, overtake, cut in front, cut in front and stop. Definitely not. That's how easy it is to make a mistake. I've done that on my previous two mock tests. At least I'm learning from my mistakes. What should you do when you're using a contra flow system? So what should you do? Um, increase speed to get through the contra flow more quickly. No, that's not going to be safe. Choose an appropriate lane in good time. That's going to be an option. Choose a lane in good time. Switch lanes to make progress better. Definitely not. Follow other motorists closely to avoid long queues. You should never follow someone closely. So it's going to be that option. When are you allowed to park in a parking bay for disabled drivers? The only time you can do that is if you've got a disabled badge, badge, a blue badge, in other words. You should never be doing that any other times. Um, when you have an adapted vehicle, no. When you have a blue badge, yes. When you have a wheelchair, no. When you have an advanced driver certificate, no. What do you need before you can legally use a motor vehicle on the road? That's going to be driver's license. You need to have the right category of license for driving that vehicle. And if you didn't know you're doing a driving test, it's a category B license you're looking for. Breakdown cover, no. A vehicle handbook, no. An appropriate driver's license, yes. A proof of your identity, no. You've been involved in an argument that's made you feel angry. What should you do before starting your journey? Calm down, just chill. Um, calm down, first one out. Never drive angry, doesn't make sense. And don't let someone spoil your day either. Um, there's always going to be idiots out there. Let them get on with it. Turn on your radio. No, open up window. No, have an alcoholic drink. Definitely not. Why is it bad technique to coast when you're driving downhill? Bad, um, coasting is um, lack of control, lack, lack of engine brake, and it can work it either way. Um, the vehicle will gain speed more quickly. That's a possibility. The engine will overheat. No, the tyres will wear, wear more quickly. No, the fuel consumption will increase. It's going to be this one. It's just a lack of control. With that, especially for those of you doing um, manual lessons. Um, what should you do about driving if you've been taking medicine that causes drowsiness? Um, ask someone to come with you. No. Avoid driving and check with your doctor. That's the safest option. Avoid driving if you're going to feel drowsy. The last thing you're going to do is fall asleep at the wheel. Only drive if your journey is necessary. No. Drive on quiet roads. No. What does this sign mean? Again, look at the image, picture of a tram. And it's got only underneath as well. Parking for buses only, no. Route for trams only, yes, based on the image. Parking for trams only, no. And route for buses only, no. So these are the case studies, which are the video. Let me scroll down to see what the question is. What do the lines along the center of the road mean? So if we go to the image. These are hazard lines. So they're talking about these lines here. They're hazard lines. Um, so I don't really need to watch the video for that. Let's make sure it's on screen. Uh, no stopping, no. They mark the centre of the road, no. They would be shorter lines, bigger gaps. They're hazards ahead. Is that one? No overtaking. And the answer to that is no. So let's take a look at the question. You want to overtake the tractor, what should you do? So let's look at the video of this one. So you um, want to overtake the tractor, what should you do? You've got a car coming towards you and you're on the bend. So the safest thing to do with this is overtake after the bend when you're on a straight. But let's see what option they gave us. Right, just repeat the question again. You want to overtake the tractor, what should you do? Speed up and overtake before you get to the bend, definitely not. Sound your horn and make the tractor pull over, no. You're making him pull over, that's definitely not. Stay behind and wait until you have a clear view, that's the safest option. Overtake sh straight after the oncoming car passes, no.
Um, why has the tractor got flashing amber light? Um, the reason why it's flashing amber, don't need to watch the video for that one, is slow moving. Go back to the previous question earlier on in the test. Ash, um, flashing amber is a slow moving vehicle. To tell you not to overtake, no. To warn you is slow moving, yes. Um, to warn you is breaking down, no. And to warn you it's a wide load, no. Um, got a question wrong. It seems like 49 is my sweet spot. I can't get this 50 out of 50. But um, let's take a look what I got wrong. Uh, when should you use the left-hand lane of a motorway? See, I read that wrong. as I read that as a right-hand lane. And I've gone for overtaking. And again, no excuses. Um, my dyslexia probably kicked in on that. But again, because I know my previous 49 questions, it doesn't make a difference. And that's why I say if you fully understand it, you can afford to get two or three questions wrong. Whereas if you're borderline 43 when you're doing your mock test, going to the test, if you get a question wrong or make a silly mistake like I did, you're going to end up getting a fail. But like I said, because my knowledge is strong, me getting one or two questions wrong is not a massive deal to me. But I will add as well, um, I'm not going to cut that out because like I said, I'm not perfect. I keep making these mistakes in the mock test, but it's good. Um, it just shows you that I'm real. I'm not fake. Um, so hopefully you got some benefit from those 50 questions and learn something from that. So now I'm going to jump into the hazard perception. My score previously on the desktop app is not the best on the hazard perception because it's not the best quality. I'm getting my excuses in now just in case. But let's see what I get on the on the mock test itself. So don't forget, you'll, it's 14 videos. 13 of them have single hazards, got a maximum of five. One of them's got a double hazard, two fives. You're looking for anything that's going to cause you a problem, i.e. to slow down or change direction because that's you checking the mirrors. And remember, I do a two-click method. See the problem, click, go one, two, and then click again. And that should hopefully get you a score between the five and the three because your average has to, has to be more than three across the board. If your average is less than three, it's going to be a fail. So let's jump in and see how I do. So always look ahead of the vehicle, looking from left to right, right to left to see if there's any issues. And I can't see anything at the moment. Cyclist. That's well late, I saw it late on that one. But you never know, keep clicking just in case it wasn't a problem. Vehicle's coming towards me. And the bend I can't see around. I think I scored poorly on that one, but remember you got to average at least a three on each clip. So I'll need a couple of four or fives to bring the average up. Car cut in the corner. Can't see much going on at the moment. Speed limit change. Still can't see anything. I probably got the car cut in the corner right at the beginning. Again, looking at the traffic lights, the green can turn to red by the time I get there. That car that's looking to turn. Because the quality is really, really poor. I 
can't see anything going on. I can only see it. Oh, someone's in the road. Cars looking to turn. Uh, it's got to be the pedestrian that was in the road earlier on. This one's a little bit clearer. Cyclist. I'm going to go again just in case. May cut me up, black one. See brake lights up ahead. And looking ahead, traffic slowing down. Again, I'm looking from pavement to pavement, literally scanning the road from left to right, right to left. Got the van parked up on the left. I'm going to have to move back to the right, so that'll be a right door mirror check. Car coming out. Again, I think that's late as well. Keep looking, you don't know which one's going to be the double. Again, looking well ahead as far as you can see and then work your way back to yourself. So scanning left to right, right to left. Cars coming down. He's on the wrong side of the road there. Again, looking up the road as far as you can see. Pretty much straightforward drive, so it's got to be the car that was on the wrong side of the road earlier on. Again, scanning the road. Again, not much is happening just yet. It's like a cyclist up ahead, I'm going to click. I'm moving out, so again, it's a mirror check. Triangle's warning me or something. Road bends to the right. Was wide and clear, so nothing's going on just yet. Let me 
is scanning ahead. God, the quality of these videos are really poor. I will add when you take your test, it's going to be a lot clearer, a lot sharper. Car coming up the side roads, another one coming up the side roads. Cars parked up on the right, so the left. Let me click on that one again. Hopefully this is coming out a little bit clearer on video, but um, in front of me it's really hard to see. I'm probably going to do the brake light straight away. I don't know if I'm doing a good demonstration for you guys. Again, he's flashing his lights. One of his presents, but he's actually letting me go. Remember, don't flash your lights on your driving test. Another tight space. Car's not stopping at the roundabout. Should be giving way to me. Where the car to my right, just in case it popped out. Car ahead's turning right. Got a signal on. That's a roundabout. Turning right for those of you taking driving lessons, how do you know when you can go? If you can walk it, you can drive it. Oh, that was a bit tight. Can't see random bends on the floor, it says slow as well. Just in case, cars come in. Now the cars come in. The other thing I will add, if you're going for a two click method, don't be afraid to go for a third click if you think you've messed up. Um, as long as you're not going trigger happy, clicking all over the place, you can do a three click just to make sure a score's better than zero. So as much as saying, yeah, do two clicks, don't feel that you have to do two clicks. He's got a signal on, so he may have to slow it down. He's actually got brake lights on, so I'm going to go again. And I'm actually going to go again, so I'm doing the three clicks on that one. Again, looking deep into the bend, everyone seems to be behaving himself at this point in time. Wow. Slow on the floor. Then looking ahead. Car coming towards me is a bit tight, so I'm going to click on that. Lights are green in the distance. Could change to red. Go slow on the floor again. Let's click on the car coming towards me. Cars are parked up on the left. 
I'm going to go for another one on that one. Free click. Just in case. Rumble strips. Lots are turning to red. That's a lot of clicks there. Right, narrow country lane. Thirty miles, no national speed limit. Right, tight space. There's a car coming towards me. Is it? Can't see around the bit. I'm going to go just in case. What if? Right, person's in the road. I'm going to do a free click on that one. The little doggy. Cars there waiting. Right, don't see anything going on. I'm in the right hand lane as well. Should be staying left when possible. Triangle's warning me of a roundabout coming up. Click randomly there, I thought there was something there on the left. Brake lights from the white car. Cyclist. You scored 44 out of 75. I just scraped it. Can you believe that? Well, let's just take a quick look what I've got. I've got zero in the first one. Four out of five, three out of five, four out of five, two out of five. Two out of five, two out of five, five out of five, two out of five, three out of five, four out of five. On my double, scored two fives. That saved me. I got a 10 on my double. If I didn't get a 10, I would have failed it. Three out of five and zero out of five. There's lots of zeros. Right, let me just review a clip for you. Let's do the last one. So you can see where I totally messed up on this. So let's just fast forward it. So here we go. Well, that's where it said I should have clicked and I don't see nothing I should be clicking for. That's interesting. It's like it's a cyclist. What did it say? Cyclist on large roundabout. I don't think this is proper because if you look at there, that's where it says, but you can't see the cyclist from there. When I saw the cyclist, it was literally, I could have clicked about here for the cyclist. I see it there, but that's not really a problem for me. I don't, I'm not making excuses, but I don't think this is finely tuned on the desktop app for some reason, because there's nowhere on earth that I could see the cyclist, let alone hit the cyclist from here. I can't even see it. But just a little hit for, tip for you guys as well with that type of thing. That's what you do with your hazard perception. If you are struggling with the hazard perception, do not be afraid to review it back. I'll just do another review for you guys as well. Um, let me go back into screen share. And they're saying I could have clicked there. You guys probably can't even see that. Um, I can't see anything on there. Oh, there's a cyclist now. I can see the cyclist now. The point I'm making is if you are not sure what you have perception, do them as individual clips and then review it back to see where you could have improved on that. I will do another one of this. I can't see myself using the desktop app um, to be frank. I don't think it's in line. I'll be using the iPad version 
of the app to do my hazard perception. I probably still do the questions on the app, but not the hazard perception. It's actually making me look bad as well, to be honest. But anyway, hopefully you got some benefit from the hazard perception side of that. Hopefully you got some benefit from the video. As I said, I don't hide anything from you guys. If I fail it, I fail it. If I pass it, I pass it. It's in the video. It's not about being perfect. It's about improving your score and your questions. So hopefully you got benefit from that. YouTube's going to show you a video here. I'm going to show you a video here and I'm going to catch you in the next video.